Hello everyone, I'm Oscar Karnalim from Maranatha Christian University, Indonesia. On this occasion, I will present my research entitled Programming, Plagiarism and Collusion, Student Perceptions and Mitigating Strategies in Indonesia. I'm with Irwan Alnado Skotsar from Universitas Muhammadiyah Sidoarjo, Bayuri Aditya from Telkom University, Yogi Ujaja from Pina Nusantara University, Matahari Bhakti Nendia from Duta Wacana Christian University, and Inyoman Dharma Kotama from Udayana University. All of them are from Indonesia. Now, the background. So many strategies have been proposed to mitigate programming, plagiarism, and collusion. However, the effectiveness can vary due to different cultural and or geographical background. A few studies have been conducted to provide a better picture about the matter in particular countries. However, none of them focus on Indonesia. So as the contributions, first we report undergraduate student perceptions about programming plagiarism and collusion in Indonesia. Second, we summarize some strategies that have been applied in Indonesia to mitigate programming plagiarism and collusion. Third, we list any remaining issues and suggest some recommendations. Student perceptions of programming plagiarism and collusion was collected via a questionnaire survey. It contains 11 scenarios adapted from Reference 27. For each scenario, students were asked whether that scenario is academic misconduct. The survey was mainly distributed to students in six universities of the authors, but they are encouraged to redistribute the survey to their college from other universities. In total, we have 345 respondents from 16 Indonesian universities. As the general findings, first, in most scenarios, there is only a few small portion of do not know response. It means that students are somewhat familiar with the scenarios and feel the relevancy. Second, the average correct response rate is 67%. Indonesian students are quite knowledgeable in this matter. However, this finding does not represent unmotivated students as the survey was entirely voluntary without any compensation. Now we'll discuss about scenario specific findings. Key of four is correctly answered by most respondents, 92%. It is about incorporating another student work without their permission. Students might be aware that asking permission is deemed appropriate before borrowing a particular work. Key O7 and Key O9 are two other scenarios that are correctly answered by most respondents. 88% correct respond rate. Key O7 is about discussing with another student how to approach a task and what resources to use, then developing the solution independently. Key O9 is about showing troublesome program to another student and asking them for advice on how to fix it. Both are considered acceptable practices since all programs are still written individually. And sharing the idea or getting advice is still acceptable unless mentioned otherwise. Three scenarios result in less than half of the correct responses and thus are in need to be explicitly informed to students. Key O3 is about basing an assessment largely on a work that has been previously submitted for a previous course without acknowledgement. The possible misconception is that the reused work is their own and they do not harm anyone. Key O6 is about copying an early draft of another student's work and developing it into their own. The possible misconception is that the students still need to put a lot of effort to complete the work prior to submission. Key 10 is about asking another student to take troublesome program and get it working. The possible misconception is that the program is still mainly written by the student 
and the scenario seldom changes the program substantially. There are a number of strategies to mitigate programming plagiarism and collusion in Indonesia. These are based on authors' experiences as instructors and their college shared stories. The first strategy, which is the most common one, is to require students to complete the assessment while being monitored by the instructors in a physical classroom. Of course, it is only applicable before the pandemic. There are a number of restriction variations like no internet access, no external data drive, no discussions with other students, and unable to choose their own sitting position. The second strategy is to make unique assessments per course offering. Given that developing new assessments are labor intensive and time consuming, some instructors modify existing assessments and or ask students to freely choose their own case studies. The third strategy is to confirm the authorship of the work via a post-submission test. The test can be an interview, an oral presentation, or a written test. On some occasions, the test is only issued for some students selected at random or based on their likeliness to cheat. The fourth strategy is to check for similar programs. It can be manually or semi-automated with a similarity detection tool. The fifth strategy is to inform students about academic integrity and elaborate what kinds of penalties that they would get if caught. Typically, it is delivered verbally at the beginning of the course. The sixth strategy is to alleviate pressure to do academic misconduct. So instead of issuing a few large assessments, we can issue many small assessments. Also, we can let students to complete the assessment in group, and we can allow late submissions. There are still some issues and then we have provided some recommendations also. Student misunderstand scenarios that involve self-plagiarism, copying early draft of the work and asking someone to fix the code. So they need to be specifically informed. It is also important to introduce a way to acknowledge that some parts of the code are from external resources. The second issue is that Monitoring students completing their assessments become more challenging due to the pandemic. Instructors are expected to focus more on developing unique assessments and or applying post-submission tests. Manual check for similar programs is both labor intensive and time consuming. So it is recommended to use a similarity detection tool like GPLAC, MOS, or Sherlock. In case instructors need more comprehensive explanation regarding the reported similarity, they can use STRANGE. The next issue is about issuing many small assessments. Students might think that it is okay to cheat as each assessment only contributes a little to the final grade. The recommendation is to only give students a few chances to repent. The last issue is that verbally given information about academic integrity might be forgotten. So it is recommended to put a written document. So as the conclusions, first, Indonesian students are aware of programming plagiarism and collusion, except those that involve self-plagiarism, copying early draft of the work, and asking someone to fix the code. Many strategies have been proposed, including monitoring student behavior, informing students about programming plagiarism and collusion, and issuing many small assessments. Recommendations include introducing a way to cite external code, encouraging instructors to use a similar decision tool, and applying CVR penalty. Thank you. In case you have any questions, you can contact me by email, oscar.karnalin at it.marata.edu. You can also see this recording in my YouTube channel.